Gonzaga Nation SI, I'm one of your two hosts, Dan Dickow, alongside Adam Morrison. He's one of the radio voices. I'm one of the TV voices. It's here. Conference season is done. Mm -hmm. Gonzaga didn't quite finish out undefeated, which we both thought they were going to. We knew it was going to be a challenge. But let's talk about the two games um, that they just played at San Francisco and at St. Mary's. Uh, San Francisco put up a valiant effort. I think they're an NCAA tournament team. You yeah. called the game from court side. What did you see? I think uh, Todd Golden has, always has a good plan. I think their actions and their guards are, t- are tough to handle. We double teamed on the pick and roll action, which we haven't done all year for the most part to start the game. Usually we kind of wait and see on, on Shabazz and Bouye. So um, I thought... San Francisco had opportunities to stay in that game and didn't make enough plays and enough shots. Um, And I wasn't surprised by the outcome. Uh, It was a well-contested game. It was closer than it was before in Spokane, and they always play us way better down there. Um, So, yeah, I thought uh, for the most part it was a good win. I think they're an NCAA tournament team, talking about San Francisco. Strength of schedule is going to hurt them. I know they're at 28 in the Ken Palmer were last week before the la- before that game last year I think it was NC State is the the one I heard that was 33 and didn't mm-hmm. make it so they're really close to being right on in or out yeah yeah that you're right it was NC State that was a 33 that didn't get in didn't get in um and the thing right now when to me the metrics say that USF is in yeah I think 26 as of this morning okay but the 24 to 29 whatever it is that range yeah you would imagine they're in they're also in that range in the net things Mm -hmm. will shift after another round of games today yeah um I had a conversation with Todd Golden last week and I didn't specifically ask him, are you an NCAA tournament team or not? Because that's, that's hard. so yeah, hard to and ask Yeah, he's going to lobby and all that stuff. Yeah. Anyway. But essentially what he said was, if you look at the metrics, because he's a big analytic guy, he said, Gonzaga's far and away the best team in our league. Mm-hmm. Offensive and defensive efficiency adjusted metrics of it, the two. Mm-hmm. He said, they're second. And I didn't realize this. Their, their metrics are even better than San Francisco in league play as far as when you take them out unfortunately for them though it hasn't resulted in victories yeah and that's where a lot of the eye test comes down is those people sitting in the selection committee on that five days yeah watching hundreds of games and then clips of games did san francisco do enough in the clips that those people watched to say they're in well the loss to Portland's going to hurt because that's a 280 or whatever in the RPI. Yeah. So that's quote unquote, it's a bad loss. Um, they barely won the game at Portland. Okay. So it was a back to back. So the, those two, one win, and obviously that's a squeaker, and then one loss is going to kill you. I think they have to make it to the championship game to really have mm-hmm. a, a concise argument about we belong here. And then play Gonzaga close. I think they're in. Obviously, if they win it, they're automatically in. So it it it, it is a coin flip. I think they are by style of play, eyeball tests. They have good guard play. Their inside presence is decent as well. They play a fun style. I know that it's not supposed to matter, but it kind of does. <laughs> it does. Right? You know what I'm saying? Um, so it, it'll be interesting for the league's sake. I hope they get in. If they don't, I wouldn't be surprised either. And yeah. I know that's a weird answer, but it's like, well, strength of schedule matters because, you know, at the start of the year, well, we beat Arizona State, and you're like, they haven't done much. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, they're not very good. You can't just, because it's a, a, a Pac-12 school or a name, you can't just be like, yeah, we beat them. It's like, well, they're not very good this year. So it'll be very interesting uh, to see how that plays out. You know, And like I said, in the Gonzaga game, down there I, I wasn't surprised on the outcome I knew they'd play us tough but they just didn't make enough shots down the stretch and then defensively they didn't really have uh, much resistance for especially early I think we made our first six shots and the yeah. first were three out of uh, three threes out of those six you know so it was just bang 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 and you can't put yourself in a hole against a really good Gonzaga team yeah and I would agree with what you said they need to at least make the title game yeah I mean I'm pulling for him. I'm Same a WCC here. fan. I want that to be the I case. I like Todd Golden, too. He's a good coach. Yeah. I, I don't think he's going to beat USF long. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're trying to win down there. They are. And they've redone the building. Uh, I think recruiting is is a little bit better than it has been in the past. 
Um, so you never know. And that's the thing though. It's like, um, are they, would they be happy? And would he be happy with like, Hey Todd, you can schedule yourself into 18 to 22 wins a year. Probably not going to win the league, but you'll be good. Mm-hmm. Do you want to go somewhere else where it's an uphill battle again? You know what I'm saying? Cause Kyle it's Smith, hard it's hard, you know, have gotten yeah. to this program to a pretty good spot. Now, what I don't know what they pay him and all that stuff, cost of living in, in San Francisco. I mean, that that's a real thing to consider when yeah. you're talking about leaving a, you know, San Francisco is a high place to live. Or yeah, I've had a couple conversations with coaches that live in those high it just, cost of living. Cost cities. of living, yeah. And if it's a smaller school or a Division two, you live on campus. Yeah. In, 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 like the the, the mm-hmm. university will own a few ha- houses. That's not fair to say they live on campus. It's university they owned own. houses yeah. or townhouses that would fit a family. Mm-hmm. And that's 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 a a decision that somebody would have to make with a growing family. Absolutely. Yeah, like, would you want to live? Like, I lived in L.A., so did you. Mm-hmm. At that time of my life, I loved it. It was great. Yeah. I wouldn't want to live in L.A. and deal with the traffic and, and the amount of you know, Not busyness much, now yeah. as opposed to being out in space in Spokane. Yeah, no, and especially if you're a grinder, like you're um, constantly on campus, like you said, or in the, in, you know, in the gym and whatnot. Well, if you're not getting reciprocated with pay on the backside, it, it can make it difficult. But like I said, San Francisco is trying to win down there. They are, yeah. you know, and, and I know that sounds funny. Everybody thinks, oh, everybody's trying to win. It's like, well, not all you, teams, not all teams. <laughs> Some programs, I mean, we had that out of Cheney yeah. a few years ago. Or they almost voted to, to, to go to D3 or whatever the heck it was and they almost got rid of all the sports. So, like, that's an example right there. And they're like, they're really good at football. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you're, like, scratching your head, like, really? And so it'll be interesting if he stays around. I think he's a great young coach. I don't know about his recruiting. I'm just – I have no clue. Yeah. You know what I mean? Bouye is a good player, but he's a fifth-year guy. Mm-hmm. Shabazz, they found him diamond in the rough from Central all the way to San Francisco – um, so that aspect you have to consider when you bring on a new coach. Well, you need good players to come. But X and O, analytics, style of play, all those factors, he looks like, yeah, this kid, I should call him a kid, he's my age. But <laughs> yeah. you get what I'm saying? Like yeah. coaching standards. Yeah. Um, he deserves an opportunity. Yeah, and he's got great pedigree. He was a, with Bruce Pearl at Auburn. So you know he has yeah. a balance of understanding different levels. Um but staying on the San Francisco game, one last topic before we go to St. Mary's. Chet Holmgren was unreal. Yeah. 21 points, 15 rebounds, six blocks. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, we're going to start getting to the point of the season where people are talking only about NC or excuse me, NBA draft positioning. And it's yeah. already started, mm-hmm. which he's granted. I think he's locked as a top three pick. Uh, yeah. But it depends who gets what, it, where. That's 100%. all it is. Depends yeah. on who gets that yeah. pick. But are you seeing a player that's completely comfortable on the floor right now? Because yeah. at USF, he would, no, nobody could do anything with him. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen him be rushed in a long time. Um, you know what I mean? At the start of the season, you, you kind of understand that as a young freshman, even highly touted as he is and played in you know overseas matches and stuff like that, like high-level basketball coming into it. Um, he seemed a little rushed at times. And it wasn't like he wasn't putting up numbers, but mm-hmm. just – you know, that takes a while to, for the speed of the game or just the physicality or what's a good shot in this program. You know, you kind of understand it, but you, you get the, you know, you can feel when a coach is not happy with, all right, that's a bad shot, even if you know you can make it. Now it's like he's just playing in such a great rhythm and kind of playing or just taking what the defense gives him. I think at some uh, the start of the season, it was a little bit rushed. And that's not a, like I'm not saying it's he played normal. bad. Yeah, exactly. He didn't yeah. play bad. His numbers were always great. You always be look, you know, after the radio games and we do the post game, like, where was Chet tonight? And be like, oh, he was seven and nine, had fourteen and like <laughs> nine. You know yeah, what I mean? I would like, love that as a freshman. I think I had saying. two double figure games my freshman year. So I'm saying it's like it, it didn't jump out at you, but then you're like, well, if we're gonna go rim, just pure rim protection, and it's not just blocks. It's how many shots did you alter and miss? It's like a plus and then you go down the line you're like a minus b plus which are great grades yeah. now it's like a minus a minus a a a a plus a plus all the you yeah. know all across the board so yeah i think he's just in a fantastic rhythm right now he's shown his whole skill set um and he's just kind of just taking what the defense gives him but it's it's such a tough cover for anybody yeah. especially in the west coast conference he's fun to watch too because i mean everybody keeps using the term unicorn and it's starting to get overused yeah but at the same time it's like He's fun to watch because 
with his size and his his lankiness and his length, you don't think people should be handling the ball and probing in transition yeah. the way he does. I think the one play that that really um, solidified to me that okay, he has been growing in his game, like you've talked about, yeah. was when he probed in transition and took off at two feet from the WCC logo yeah. and two hand finish. Like, mm-hmm. okay, boom, yeah, done. No, nobody can deal with him. Well, his year. his ability to bother shots, obviously, clean up the glass. And then lead the break is what I think is one of his greatest assets, especially in college basketball. Yeah. Now in the NBA, a lot of guys can do that. And it's not saying any, it's not an, an asset at that level either, but it's like everybody just gets out wide and they run the lanes and they kind of just start the offense through him. Drew can do it as well. Not at that high level, yeah. but I'm just saying for you to have a seven, two guy, clean it up. And then you can just get your fast guards, Nemhard, Bolton, Hunter, when he's in there, Nolan, <laughs> get out and run wide it's such a tough cover because usually your bigs are told you know sprint your tail off to the rim and then meet him at the free throw (laughs) line right i mean now he's got to come out and guard a three now the whole you know the 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 basket's open for back cuts and all that stuff so yeah he's playing fantastic um you know i'm excited for him because i think he's got a little bit of edge to him and i think he understands um that he has to keep continuing to play well. I mean, his draft status is going to be that, but he he seems like a kid that wants to, like, leave a mark on his deal yeah. here, even though it's one year, kind of like Jalen last year, like, understand, like, hey, let's play well here and let's try to make a deep run, and, you know, and then I'll be a zag for life. You yeah. get what I'm saying? 100%. So. I see that, too. You know, the, the joy he plays with and the way yeah. he interacts with all of his teammates. You've probably seen it, too. Some teammates only want, and I'm not saying this is at Gonzaga, but mm-hmm. some teammates at different places only want to talk with the starters. Yeah. Or they, if it was the college level, they wouldn't talk with the, the walk-ons. Mm-hmm. Or in the NBA, you know, I'm not talking to him. He's mm-hmm. hurt. He's on injured reserve. I mean, it's, yeah. it's one of those weird dynamics that you rarely fall into and see at Gonzaga. Yeah, I've been um... – you know, that's one of the first things I kind of watch when I watch like high level kids that come in or, you know, high recruits or whatever, how you define is like, okay, how's he interact with coach yelling at him? How's he interact with not getting the ball every single time? How's he interact when he gets a little bit of physicality, gets knocked down? Everything was like a, a, a plus, you know what I mean? Honestly, I'm like, Oh, this kid's actually pretty tough. You know what I mean? Like for real. And like, I've, I've had some other, you know, um, publications call me doing stories on him and i'm just like hey you can coach him he's tough he plays the right way mm-hmm. i know that's always a cliche but it's like some guys i'm gonna be the number one pick i ain't swinging it like he yeah. swings it you know what i'm saying he does all of that and like i've seen coach few like absolutely rip him yes a new one and it's never or i seen remember at the start of the year sometimes he's playing like 20 minutes mm-hmm. even in, in big games he didn't pout didn't pout i never saw i mean he's probably pissed but one of the greatest skill sets you can have, especially at the next level, is like learning how to fake it yeah. in that regard. You know what I'm saying? I never was good at that. I wasn't good at it either. Yeah. It's hard. You know what I'm saying? But you got to learn how to fake it and just get through it. And then, you know, you're not a distraction on the locker room, you know, all that yeah. stuff. Um, so, yeah, I've been just thoroughly impressed with his game and how it's grown. But some of the intangibles, coachable, good teammate, all that stuff. Well, let's move to St. Mary's. Okay. Um, Gonzaga had a chance to run the table, fourteen and zero. You know, if coming into this season, if you would have said Gonzaga was thirteen and one in league, I probably would have said, "Boom, let's take it." Yeah, I think you would have said that. Most fans that know the game would have said that. But once you started seeing the buildup of the program throughout this year and how they were gelling, you start getting the "Oh, we're unde- we're going to go undefeated in league. Mm-hmm. We're going to make another Final Four, Not knowing how difficult that road truly is. Mm-hmm. St. Mary's was good the other night, and they were the better team that night. Would yeah. you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I think their plan was fantastic. I think, you know, they implored some of the same defensive strategy that they tried up here, and that game was closer than 16 points, I think it was, in Spokane, yeah. right, if my memory serves. So it was not surprising, and I know I'm not just trying to pat myself on the back, but like, oh, see, I told you so, <laughs> but, like, I was like. Yeah, but you saw something. Well, and Randy always has a good plan yeah. against us, okay? And he teaches those kids um, to play physical and not scared. Sometimes it's when we beat them, it's their personnel limitations. I'm not saying they're not good players, but sometimes we just have better guys. Mm-hmm. Okay, but he's going to come in and make you earn everything. I've said it on the radio all the time, and it's so true. Like, 
people come in and try to slow down against us, but that's not their identity. That's what St. Mary's does. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they're going to make it a, a, Leon Rice used to always say bloody nose lane. Like you're going to go in there and you're going to get hit. Usually at home, you get better calls. And it was kind of a tornado of all those things coming together. And then it was senior night. I personally don't mind a, a loss at the late in the season, obviously not in the tournament, West Coast Conference tournament. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But I think it just kind of can reset you got your, your team focus. You can coach off of it better. Um, and then you get a chance to self-scout. Like, well, hey, guys, they're probably going to do the same thing when we get in the tournament. So, like, we need to f- correct these things or these are the counters to the, what defensive strategy they're using. So, um I mean, I kind of chuckled a few times in the game because everything was going St. Mary's way. And I was like, well, it happens. Well, I mean, a great story is the Tommy Cousy kid. He's a Mm walk-on, and he earns a scholarship. Now he's he's earned the starting point guard role for at least the last two years. And this is not a knock against him. He he doesn't look like a high-level Division I point guard, Mm -hmm. but he controlled that game. Like, the pace that St. Mary's want to play at, that was dictated – by the decisions Tommy Cousy made, when mm-hmm. to slow it, when to push it, angles to take on pick and rolls, decisions to make with passes. I thought he was tremendous. Yeah. And on the flip side, Gonzaga's guards, they've been good throughout the year, and they scored it okay. I think Bolton had 16. 16, yeah. But one assist, no. uh, seven turnovers that night was not – that's not going to get it done. Yeah, well, I think, like I said, the defensive plan was good. The biggest thing I saw was their meet and drew Timmy up high. Mm-hmm. Okay, and what I mean by that is – you know, if you want to provide resistance, um, you know, to a really good low block score, you don't want to get him to his spots, plain and simple. So if you can meet him up high legally and make him work before he even gets the ball. And then second, when he was putting on the floor, and this is, it's a knock on Drew, but it's it's not like a, a you know, like a personal thing. He's not a great passer off the drip bounce. Mm-hmm. He's just not. He's been it's pro- a hard thing to do for a guard, let alone a big. Exactly, and he's been programmed to go score, which he's one of the best at in the country at, at probably one of the best we've ever had, mm-hmm. pure back to the basket, okay? Like, if we're just going Gonzaga bigs, he might be the best as yeah. post fakes, all that stuff. He's not a very good, good passer off the dribble, so every time he put it on the floor, they dive-bombed him. And then he said, okay, you're going to have to pass out, and it threw him off his rhythm. And Toss is a big body, and he's not a bad player as well, so, like, that's a good matchup where they can say – Okay, we can kind of we can one on one him without a straight double team, but we can dig on every time he puts it on the floor. So I think that's the biggest thing that St. Mary's did well, um, you know. And then we couldn't get in a rhythm offensively. But again, it's like when you lose to St. Mary's. I remember if you watch the game, like Coach Few was chuckling on the sideline. Like, <laughs> good job, Randy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and Randy was probably like, "Yeah, we'll see you again." You know, like we're both good teams. <laughs> I and, think that's one of the funniest things, though. Is like I, I saw this comment on social media, like. Oh, Coach Few's giving up on these guys. He's laughing with one of the opponents. It's like 20 yes. seconds left. The game's decided. The game's decided. And people have said before, like, oh, get ready for a blow-by handshake from Randy Bennett when it, a game's been decided. It's like, dude, why do they need to shake they hands don't, again? And they, I guarantee they've texted each yes. other before the game or, <laughs> like, going through shoot-arounds, like, see each other in the hallway. Yeah. I guarantee at the meetings, the WCC meetings, they the probably have had a steak <laughs> and a wine together, and they probably said, hey, our programs are here, and some of them are here. So, like, when we talk about certain issues, we have to help each other yeah. out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they kind of like, yep, yes, yeah. we do, because we want the conference to go in a certain direction focused on basketball. So, yeah, I, I've never understood, the, you know, all the buzz about the handshake stuff, I guess. I mean, it, it's... Well, it's gotten a bigger deal since the Juwan Howard yeah. incident a week or so ago, yeah. but... Last question before we wrap this one up mm-hmm. is uh, Kelly Olenek hit a big-time game winner. Uh, it was last night, yeah. being Sunday, uh, and we actually got a, a question on direct uh, message from social media to, from, to me to start again. We got another question. <laughs> we got another qu- You want to take this one? Uh, yeah. Like, well, you want to talk about game winners, <laughs> yes. like in college? That's what That's what the direct message was. Okay. Yeah. Um, How many of you hit, or what did you hit? Favorite um, one? I hit, I hit one in Oklahoma State in the arena. Then I hit one in, um, at home my sophomore year against San Francisco. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're harder to come by. I've hit late shots, but nothing. Those were both not – Te- technically like at the buzzer so like i don't know how you kind of define it i've hit big threes too late you know where it kind of solidifies the game so i always kind of put that in the category a little bit was the oklahoma state one your favorite 
Uh, probably just for a crowd reaction. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't a pure basketball play like the San Francisco one was because it was just, you know, right to left crossover and a yeah. straight pull up. And it was like a workout move. But yeah. like, okay, I've done this. I know what I'm going to do to this guy and then execute it. And then we play defense. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But like crowd reaction, um, Oklahoma State one was fun. Um, Did you ever get one in the NBA? Not at, not at the uh, – I've hit a couple big shots my rookie year, but I never hit one at the buzzer, no. Okay. No. Yeah, I, I, I had a number of buzzer beaters type game winners at Gonzaga. Mm-hmm. At USD was one. We beat um, – would have been St. John's or Texas. Can't remember now. It's so funny. 20 years later, you can't remember the exact team. Yeah. But it was in the Great Alaska Shootout. And then in the NBA – Myself and Luka Doncic are the only players in NBA history to hit two go-ahead threes in the last 25 seconds oh, of nice. the game. Oh, nice. That's a cool So thing I hit have. two threes there in the go. last 20 seconds to win a game when I was with the Hornets against the Clippers, so it was kind of cool. But That's cool. Yeah, so good episode. Yeah. Next one coming up, we're going to talk about our picks for WCC awards okay. and then preparing – for a conference tournament is there any difference okay so we'll run it back in just a second for gonzaga nation si adam morrison and dan dickow